Hi everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining us on your Tuesday. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about occupational therapy and pediatrics. Like it says in the description, this is a two-part series. So next week we'll be joined by a physical therapist to get her perspective. Um, my name is Regan Ennis and I'm Angela Gerstenkorn. And um, we are so excited for you to join us, those of you who are tuning in. Um, we'll give you just a few seconds. Uh, we do have a Trivia Tuesday question, and this uh, particular subject has been covered briefly before, so we're giving you an in if you've watched our videos before. Um, but today, the Trivia Tuesday question is, what does the occupational and occupational therapy refer to? So I'll say it again. So what does the occupational and occupational therapy refer to? It's not what everyone would think it would be, for sure. So um, while we're getting started, um, why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction on your background with pediatrics? Sure, so I got my master's at Rockhurst University and there for my master's research, we researched um, play and playfulness in children with visual impairments. So we looked at how children with visual impairments played and what type of playfulness they showed. Um, and then my clinical rotation was outpatient pediatrics, so we worked on uh, sensory play, we worked on a lot of feeding, we worked on handwriting and life skills. Cool. And then recently I worked at a hospital where I did some work in the NICU, and then I did some outpatient therapy as well with kids with sensory processing disorders, brachial plexus injuries. And then I uh, volunteer with Special Olympics, so... <laughs> You've done a lot, yeah. 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 <laughs> Get to do a little bit of occupational therapy there without all the documentation, so that right. part's there you go. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so pediatrics is something that you're familiar with, and it is something that um, a lot of our clinics, both preferred and advanced, um, treat. Um, and so if you have any questions about that, please refer to our uh, our. Facebook page, contact us forms, anything like that, um, and we'll be sure to get you an answer. But um, so what what is occupational therapy? So occupational therapy, it's not just about getting back to your job, although that's something that we can do, but can I reveal the trivia you answer? Can. <laughs> okay, so occupation refers to how you occupy your time. So yes. for adults, that can be your job, that can be um, getting dressed in the morning, that can be gardening. For children, it refers mainly to play. Um, children, they need to be able to play. That's how they gain a lot of their developmental skills. That's how they meet milestones. It's how they gain strength. That's how they socialize. Um, we also work on feeding and we work on handwriting, being able to participate in school, as well as the common dressing skills and bathing right. and things like that. Yeah, so what are some common diagnoses that you see uh, with children um, that maybe OT would treat? So we have developmental disorders, a lot of things uh, we see like Down syndrome, autism spectrum disorder, failure to thrive is a common one. Um, so children who maybe are not as strong and aren't um, gaining weight as fast and meeting those milestones as quickly as they should. Um, we see a lot of brachial plexus injuries, traumatic brain injuries, strokes, and then we see the general orthopedic condition. So you fall down, you break your wrist, or right. falling yeah. off the monkey bars, those kind of things. <laughs> Yes, so um, say a child has a diagnosis, they know they need to come to OT, what does a pediatric occupational therapy evaluation look like? So the initial evaluation, a lot of it will be talking to the parent, finding out kind of what the concerns are, what you're noticing. Um, depending on the child, maybe a sensory um, evaluation that the parent can fill out to find out kind of the child's preferences. We can do a motor development um, evaluation and there's certain specific assessments that we can do in terms of that. And then one of my favorite ways to evaluate children is to just get down and play with them, get certain toys out, kind of see what they um, gravitate towards and how they um, interact with them. You can see a lot in terms of strength, range of motion, and balance when you just get some toys out and let the kid play. Definitely. Um, so after the evaluation, you've kind of identified what the problems are and what you need to do to help. So what are some treatments that, what are some treatments entail? So the treatment sessions are a lot of fun because generally <laughs> if you peek in the door, you think they're just playing in there. What are they <laughs> even doing? That's not therapy. So if that's the case and you look in and you think I'm just playing, that's perfect. I'm doing my job right. properly. So we don't want the kids to hate coming to therapy. It should be fun, but we're also... Um, we're also working them hard. We're trying to gain strength, we're trying to get range of motion, depending on whatever it may be. So, um, for instance, a child who maybe had a stroke or a brachial plexus injury, they might not have good motion in their arms. So, 
I'm not going to have them like an adult. I might have them lift their arm up and mm-hmm. down, you know, maybe with weights, things like that. I'm not going to give the kids a dumbbell. <laughs> We're going to do things like balloon volleyball. Right. So throw the balloon up in the air and see how high they can reach to hit the balloon. Or grab this block that I'm reaching up really high with and stack it on top of this shelf, that kind of a thing. So right. it should be, it should seem like just play to them. Right, absolutely. So on that note, what are some of these things in front of us? <laughs> so <laughs> They look like games. They do. They look like a lot of fun. So, yeah. you know, we've got Operation here. I promise I'm not trying to get your kid just to beat you at Operation. Although There's, that's a great plus. It is a very right. good goal. <laughs> I'm not very good at it myself. I'm not either. So they'll yeah. beat me anytime. That's why I'm not a surgeon. Yeah. So, <laughs> but... Um, For instance, I'm not trying to get them back to playing the game of operation. This is great for fine motor and pinching. So if I want them to be able to hold a pencil properly and be able to grip it properly with the amount of strength and to be able to use that coordination, operation is a fun game to do for that. Instead of having them writing sentences after sentences, this is a great way to get them to work on that pinch and that strength and that coordination without them realizing that they're working on those skills. Yeah, absolutely. So what's in this box? (laughs) So these are awesome. I love water beads. They're a lot of fun. The kids like to break them a lot of the time, but (laughs) we can do so many different things with water beads. So some kids who have like a sensory processing disorder maybe have issues with certain textures. Um, They may really enjoy the water beads or it might be a little bit much for them. So kind of easing them into different types of textures. Um, Some kids just find it fun. So if we're working on grip and pinch, I may hide items in there and they have to pinch them out with tweezers or, or grab them those kind of things so yeah the water beads sometimes are to mask actually what they're working on and it makes it a little more fun definitely so I see we have some common household things like the shaving cream. so <laughs> let's talk about that shaving cream is a lot of fun uh, we can use that for many different things as well I like using it for handwriting you know use your finger or a q-tip and you write you draw pictures in the shaving cream. So it's a lot of fun, but you're still working on that proper uh, pinch and grip for handwriting, um, as well as working on letter formation. Or again, children with sensory issues, it might be a little bit intimidating or it might be a lot of fun and it might get them interactive in the activity. So we can use it either way. Okay, and this is something that we sell in our clinics Mm -hmm. too, this is putty. So what do we do with the putty? So putty, putty's a lot of fun for the adults too. They love it when I break out the putty for hand therapy. But we can use that for grip and pinch strength. Um, we can also use it to form letters. So if we're working on handwriting, we can make the letter A. And it's a lot of fun for them because they're getting to play it with what they think is kind of Play-Doh, but it's also working on strength. So they have to form the proper letter, but they're also having to use their uh, muscles in their hands to form that letter. Definitely. So these tools are all just um, in addition to other things that we would do in the clinics. Like you said, um, you're you're playing with balloons. And, yes. And a lot of other fun things just to get the kids active and to see where they're at developmentally and to help work on those, those fine motor skills. Um, And the fun thing about all of this is this is all stuff that parents can do at home with Mm -hmm. their kiddos. So um, I bet we have a lot of uh, parents who are at home with their kids this summer. So what are maybe some tips that you would give them? You know, one of the best things you can do with your kids at really any age, um, my daughter's 10 months old, so we get down and we play with blocks and things like that, but um, getting out those kind of objects that aren't necessarily all electronic and mm-hmm. automated, um, having to use both hands. So cutting with scissors is a big thing. You have to have one hand support while the other hand does the cutting. Um, stacking blocks, putting connects or Legos together, those kind of building and fine motor activities as well as the creative activities, because I feel like we've lost a lot of our creativity. Finger painting is wonderful. Uh, I love finger painting. So (laughs) (laughs) those ones are great. So anything that they can be more creative with and it's not all um, drawn out like a video game where it's, you know, you have a certain pathway, they have to use their creativity as well as their fine motor skills. Definitely. Um, So if there was one thing that you would would tell parents or you would tell um, anyone, grandma, grandpa, um, caregiver uh, about pediatrics and occupational therapy, what would it be? Um, really that um, with occupational therapy, play is just so important. That's one of our most important occupations. As as adults, we like to use the fancy term recreational activities because we don't <laughs> want to use the word play, but it's still so play. True. And it's still super important. I mean, any type of recreational activity, you're, you're working on 
cardiovascular health, you're working on muscle strength, you're working on range of motion, and then it's, and you're working on social skills. So as adults, we like to get together with bowling leagues, running clubs, things like that, mm-hmm. social. Same thing with kids. If they can't participate and play, they can't play with the other kids on the playground, and they lose that social aspect as well. So play is so vital to not only physical development, but emotional and social and mental development as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so You're much. Welcome. I've learned stuff. And now <laughs> I just want to go get a can of shaving cream and it's take it home. Paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so if you have any questions for Angela, be sure to drop them in the comments below. We'd love to answer them for you. Um, thank you for joining us today. And we, um, we hope that you join us next week for part two of our series where we talk about physical therapy and pediatrics. So you'll have to excuse me while I get up and turn off the camera, but... We will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.